we're going to build two plugins in this course. The first one, we'll build a plugin called Base Map Loader. This is a plugin that will show you the structure of the plugin. We'll understand how to make all the files needed for a plugin. We'll install this. This will give you a button on the toolbar. And when you click the button, it's going to load the OpenStreetMap base map to QGIS. That's the functionality that we want to add. Secondly, we're going to add a more complex plugin. We're going to write a processing tool that will allow the user to select any vector layer and save the attribute table as a CSV file. And we'll see how to kind of add all of this functionality into a plugin and then distribute this as a processing plugin. So when they install the plugin, it'll add a new tool in the processing toolbox, which they can run and do this processing. So there's are the two plugins that we're going to build on that. Okay, let's go and start building a plugin. We're going to start working on section 9.1. We're going to build a plugin called base map loader. And we're going to go through all the files that is needed. And first we'll build a minimum, minimal plugin that will just have a button and you click and it'll just show something. And then we'll add some functionality. I'm going to first demonstrate how would you go and build the plugin. The plugins have to be in this special folder inside of your user profile. So for QGS to run this as a plugin, it has to be put in a special place into your profile. So we'll create a folder first on a desktop. We'll put all the files there. We'll copy over that file to that special place. And then when we restart QGS, the plugin will be loaded. So let's do this step by step. I will show you the process first. Then all of you need to do this on your own system. Make sure you have a text editor that you use. Don't use Notepad. If you're on Windows, at least use Notepad++ or some proper text editor to make sure your code is configured correctly. First step, as I mentioned, it's just easier to store this as a folder on desktop or a download folder where you can create files easily. And we can copy this folder over later to the proper place where the QGIS will load that. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to name this base map loader. This will be my main plugin folder. It can be any name. You can give any name to the folder. QGIS will look at every folder and look for those files and initialize the plugin. So I'll say my folder name will be base map loader. Then I'm going to open a text editor. So whatever text editor you use, you can open up the text editor and have a new file. So I have a new file here. And first I'm going to create a file name metadata.txt. I'm going to copy this code here and we're going to save it into this folder that we just created called base map loader. I'm going to name it as metadata.txt. Some explanation of the structure here in the metadata.txt. This is a specific format of file which QGIS uses. In this format, you have the, the name of the item and the value. There is no space between the equal to. The, one of the biggest problems you'll have is you try to do something and QGIS is an invalid metadata. Do not add any space between this equal to sign. So name is base map loader. So the name of the plugin is this, some description, some version. There's a QGIS minimum version. That means this plugin will run only on QGIS 3.x versions. There was a big change in the API between QGIS versions 2 and version 3. That's why it's there. For example, if you there was a new API that was added in QGIS 3.34, and it said, if the user is an older version, my plugin won't work. So you can just say, my QGIS minimum version is 3.34. So this plugin will not install on any versions of QGS older than that. So this will help you make sure that QGS, all the API is available here. Name of your author and your email. We can also give a logo to the plugin. This is optional. You don't have to have, but if you have a PNG file that you want to use as logo, we can use this. So we're going to have use this file called logo.png as our logo. So I'm going to save this. You can see I have this metadata.txt here. In your data package, we have also supplied with this logo.png. So I'm going to copy and paste it in here. That means we have a logo for our plugin that will be used by QGIS. Again, this file can be named anything, but it has to be referenced here as I can. So you can see I have logo.png. I've copied a file named logo.png. That's the first step. Again, I'll give you time to do this. Uh, right now, understand the process on how you would go through doing this. The second, I need a new file. So you can open a new file and this will be the, the main file with all the functionality. This is the main class of the plugin. We'll paste the code here and we'll save it as a file called load underscore base map dot pi. Follow this name convention for this plugin because the rest of the code is assuming that you have a file named load base map. This is the main plugin class. You have to 
this create a class. This is how you create a class that we have named this class base map loader plugin. Again, class could be named anything that you want. You have to tell in the next file, what is the name of your class? So here we have this class. The plugin manager will call this class to create an instance of the plugin and it will pass iFace. So to initialize this plugin, our class constructor underscore underscore init has this parameter iFace. It's going to go, you're going to save the iFace as self dot iFace as iFace. And now all your plugin will have access to iFace. Every time you want to use iFace, you'll just say self dot iFace. This is the, your plugin instance will have access to that. So when the plugin is constructed, it'll say, here's iFace, save it somewhere. So the later you want to use it, you can use that. As we mentioned, we need an init GUI function. Here, we're going to construct two items and in the user interface, we're going to create an icon. And so we have icon, we create an action, which is a button called load base map. So we'll see a button on the toolbar and we'll say add toolbar icon with this action. So we'll just put a button on the toolbar. We can also add a menu item. We're not doing this right now. In the next section, we'll learn how to add a menu item as well. But right now, this one is just saying create a queue action which is just a menu item or a toolbar button with this text load base map in this icon and add it to the toolbar icon. Remember, we all to always use self.iface, not the iface. You won't have access to iface. iface is gone. It's, you know, your plugin is running. Plugin says, I have iface, which was passed on to me. I have saved it as self.iface and you have to use that self.iface. So that's one change you have to make to your code if you put it inside a plugin. And we'll say when this button is triggered, we connect it to a function, which is a run function. Right now, the run function will just simply say a message, hello from plugin. Here is where you'll put rest of the code. When you click the button, something should happen. We just say, I have a method called run that will be connected to my plugin. And we have this unload method. Whenever you uninstall plugin or QGIS shuts down, it's going to call and say, how do I remove this plugin from QGIS? And say, just remove the toolbar icon and delete this action. And so this is part of that. So we're going to save this. That's the second file we need. Now, when plugin manager starts, it says, how do I know that which class to initialize? How to initialize the plugin? It's going to ask this third file. So you need the third file here, which will be called by the plugin manager to say, tell me how to initialize the class. So in our init.py, we're going to save this as underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, dot py. This file, we have to say, I have a file called loadbasemap.py. So here the first line says, from loadbasemap, import this class called basemap loader. So this is the class name has to be given here. So this is the main class of the plugin. The init.py should have a function called class factory, which will be called with iface and say, here is iface, do something with it. Construct the plugin. It says, my main plugin class is basemap loader plugin. Construct it with the iface parameter. And this will call this class. It'll initialize the UI and connect the run function. So we have we need to have these three files which we put inside a folder and that'll become my plugin. Let's see how to make this as a plugin. So I have those three files along with my logo.png that I've saved here. And you can see my folder contains these four files. One option for me is I can zip this and install this via plugin manager, but Right now I'm developing the plugin. I can just copy it manually to the place where all the plugins are stored. Where are all the plugins stored? They are stored in your profile. So I'm gonna to go to QGIS, settings, user profile, open the active profile folder. This is my profile folder. The default profile is called default. Inside there are all their user configuration and plugins. The plugins are inside of this folder called Python plugins. And you can see there are all these different folders. So every time you install a plugin, it simply puts all the files inside of this special folder. And this is what plugins are. So I have my plugins folder. I'm going to go and copy this base map loader folder inside of this plugins. Okay, so I have my folder here. I'm going to go and copy this and paste it inside of this. So you can see I have a new folder inside my plugins folder, which is called base map loader. For it to take effect, I'm going to restart QGS. Let's start QGS. When QGS is starting up, it's going to say, I'm going to now look inside of this plugins folder, go through each folder one by one, call the init.py file and construct the instance of each plugin. And it has done that. I can go to my plugin manager. The first time you do this, you will go to the install folder 
And when you do this for the first time, the plugin will not be enabled because it's a new plugin. You just put it there, it won't be enabled. As I come here, you can see this is the data from metadata.txt. Whatever you had done, the author name, your email, install version, the description, this is all coming from the metadata.txt file that we had constructed. And now I have this file, I can just say, turn it on. And I turn it on, the plugin gets enabled. And our plugin had added only this one icon to your toolbar. You can see this icon is there. Let me click on it. And it says, hello from plugin. So now we have our minimal plugin that is installed and functional. It just added this button. And when clicking the button, it calls this message, hello from plugin. One thing to always do is once you copy the folder, delete the folder from the desktop, because accidentally you might say, I, you'll keep updating the folder on the desktop with new code and say my plugin is not updating. So you need to make sure that you have only one copy of the plugin. And now if you want to change anything, you will update the code inside of this and the plugin will update. Time for all of you to try building your first plugin. Go ahead and work on section 9.1, create those three files, a file called metadata.txt. Replace this with your name and your email address here. Create this load base map.py, init.py, and put all of those files along with the logo.png into a folder named base map loader. Create it in desktop or downloads. After that, go to your profile. So go to the main profile folder that you have. And in your profile folder, inside there'll be a Python folder. Inside that will be plugin folder. Copy it inside of the folder. Once it's done, restart QGIS and go to your plugin manager, enable it, and you should see the plugin icon. If you see the plugin icon and when you click on it, it displays this message, you are good to go. So try this out, I'm gonna display the instructions on the screen as well. So follow this instructions and create your plugin. Okay, so we have a functional plugin. Right now the plugin is simply adding a button and when I click the button, it just sends hello from plugin. So we have a way to trigger some Python code through this button, but let's do something useful. Let's add some functionality. Let's work on section 9.2. The goal of the plugin is to load some base map layer. So for example, we have this plugin called Quick Map Services that many of you would have used. If I want to load some base map, I can go from here and load a base map like this. Right? How does this plugin work? Can we add a similar functionality to our plugin? I want to load such OpenStreetMap base map when I click this button. So how can we add functionality? So I'm gonna go back to our plugin folder. So I have the base map loader folder. I'm gonna open up this pie file with my text editor. This is what the plugin looks like. And I'm gonna replace some code here. And I'm gonna say when a plugin run button is clicked, it's gonna call this run method. And I'm gonna put my code here. Let's go back to the section. I'm gonna copy paste the whole file and replace it. There are some additional imports that are needed for this. So I'm gonna just replace the whole thing and put it here. Here, everything is similar to up to here. When you click the run button, it says, this is the URL for the tile layer that I want. It, this layer comes from OpenStreetMap. We have the URI where you have to call this URL, AZ, XY, these are called XYZ layers. QGIS will load the appropriate tiles from the server based on where you are. We'll create a raster layer using this QGIS raster layer class. Get the URI, name of the layer is OpenStreetMap, and this will be as a tile layer, which is the WMS provider. If the layer is valid, we just say QGIS project instance add map layer. So it's going to add it to the map layer, display a message that the base map layer is loaded and otherwise it's an invalid map. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to come back to QGIS, click this button. It still says hello from plugin. It didn't change the functionality because the plugins, all the files are loaded into memory when QGIS starts. They're not updated when you update the file. It'll be updated again when you restart QGIS. So if I restart a QGIS, I'll get this new functionality. But that becomes quite painful, right? I get an error, I go fix the error, I have to restart QGIS again. And that it's not very fun. So fortunately, there is a really good solution that is available. Let's go and install a plugin that will help us update the plugin easily. So there is a plugin that's available in your reposit in your QGIS repository called plugin reloader. This is a plugin that is published in the main QGIS plugin repository that will allow you to reload the plugin. So if you change some code, it's going to rerun that code, reload it, so you can now get the fresh code. Super helpful, it's a must have for anybody who's developing plugins. So go ahead and install this plugin. Search in your main 
plugin repository, go to the all tab, search for this plugin called plugin reloader, go and install that. Once the plugin reloader is installed, I'm going to show you how to reload this and you can then try this out. So it will be available in the plugin menu, go to plugin reloader, first step configure. It's going to ask which plugin you want to reload. And we have some plugin here. We'll say, I want to reload this base map loader plugin and I'm going to click OK. And then I get a, this button here, which will say reload plugin base map loader. So I'm going to run this and it's just going to reload this plugin. So I've reloaded the plugin and now it should have the latest code. So let me click on it. And now you can see it loads this base map. And now I have this really nice OpenStreetMap base layer. So try this out. Update your load basemap.py in that folder, which is the plugin folder. Make sure you're updating the right file, not the one from the desktop. You have the file in your profile folder where you install the plugin. Go and replace the whole text. Don't replace only the run file because we have some additional imports that are needed for this. So replace the entire content, save it, and then reload the plugin using the plugin reloader. And once you reload it, see if you are able to go and load this layer. I'm going to display this on the screen as well. We have made changes to the file. We want to apply those changes instead of restarting QGIS. You can just use the plugin, reload the plugin, which will reload the files and all the changes will be available to you. It's nice to have this button so you can load a new project and just say, I want to, uh, instead of starting with a blank one, you can always just say, yeah, I get my base map layer. Let's try this into a new project. I'm going to show you some additional code. So we have this places project. This has got some points and it'll be nice to just load the base map here. So if I go here and click this button, it's going to load the OpenStreetMap base map. Useful, but you can see this always gets loaded at the top. It'll be nice to have this layer get added at the bottom of my layer stack. So I can always see what's going on at the top. How can we make this happen? So I'm going to go back to my code. So this is the code. I'm going to make some changes. Before we do the exercise, you have some code here. I'm going to copy this code. So we had done this QGIS project instead of map layer. If I just add it with the default parameter, it's just going to add to the top of the layer stack. If you want to insert it at a specific place, we have to use a slightly different technique. We say add it to the map stack. So add it to the map, not to the layer panel. So there's a second parameter that is available for add map layer. We set it to false. So don't add it to the layers panel, add it to the canvas. For adding to the layer panel, we say, get me the layer tree root, find all the layers that are loaded and insert it at the position at the bottom of the road. So we say, how many items are there? Whatever layers are there, add it at the bottom of that. So I'm gonna save it. And now I'm gonna update this and let's run this. If you see, now it adds at the bottom. Quite helpful if I have, for example, this SF project and what we have it here. But if you say, I want to run this, it adds at the bottom. So quite helpful that it goes and adds it at the bottom of the your page. So you have some code available that allows you to modify this to be added at the bottom. With that, we'll do the exercise.